chilly out there. It's cold, Carol, now, I, again. I took a photo of the <laughs> little car readout this morning, Carol, because I missed it when it was minus seven, but it was minus five. It's incredibly cold in parts of the UK this morning. Lovely to be there this morning. It's a beautiful building as well. Thank you very much, John. See you later. Very impressive, isn't it? Uh, let's take you through some of the front pages on this Monday morning at 20. I need to talk to somebody about Line of Duty. Did you, did you watch it? Did, did you watch it, anyone? I mean, I can't say much because... Don't give it away, Wowzers. luckily. You can, say, you can say whatever you like. I what, know nothing to what me. What I can but... say is the first half an hour of, the, of last night's episode was, was good, was sort of up there, sort of like a 7, 8 out of 10, and then it went bonkers. Do you know, your ability not to sleep just <laughs> staggers well, me. Well, I've, I've got to get to the golf as well, Louise. I mean, I the golf kept me up. Well, I mean, Jane's going to be talking about it later on, but uh, essentially, if you, even if you don't care about golf, it's quite an important story because Hideki Matsuyama is the first male golfer from Japan to ever win a major. Won the Masters by a single shot. It was watched by millions of people back in Japan. It'll be huge news there, and it's fantastic for golf. So, well done to Hideki Matsuyama. Just, just that you do have any sleep just <laughs> staggers me. 22 minutes past six. Um, all shops in England and Wales can reopen from today after more than three months of lockdown. And Nina is in Chester. Nina's covering some serious ground this morning, walking all over the place in, in Chester. Uh, let's get some news, travel and weather. Wherever you're watching, we'll have the national headlines for you in just a couple of minutes' time. Thank you very much. A, of, all the, of all the stories, that's, that's up there, isn't it? That's a good one. Oh, right. And well told as well. Absolutely well told. Sometimes it's the way you tell them as well, yeah. isn't it? 6.40. Um, it's time for the sport and history. All sorts of the weather over the weekend. Thank you, Carol. Thank you. We'll see you later. Are you talking about getting a haircut in, in England from today? Well, um, we can't promise you you'll get a haircut, but we'll take you inside a hairdresser's in the next sort of 20 minutes or so. It's, it's all coming the same, up. is it? No, but you can sort of, you can feel, you can feel it. And, and see someone else having a haircut. Maybe that'll help you. <laughs> Will it? Maybe not. <laughs> Time now to get the news, the travel and the weather wherever you're watching. <laughs> Hello, very good morning. Welcome to Breakfast with Dan Walker and Louise Minchin. A headlines for you at 7 o'clock. Good morning, it's Monday, it's the 12th of April. The top story for you this morning, the Prime Minister has urged people to behave responsibly as England takes its next step in easing lockdown restrictions from today. Pubs and restaurants can now serve customers outside and all shops, gyms and close contact services like hairdressers can reopen. Some rules have also been relaxed in Wales, Scotland and Northern Ireland. Aruna Ayenga reports. And we'll be talking about the changes um, throughout the programme this morning on breakfast. Mm. Uh, the Prime Minister will lead tribute to the Duke of Edinburgh in the Commons later, as Parliament is recalled a day early from its Easter break. Uh, the Princess Royal said her father had left a legacy which can inspire us all. And the Duke of York said the Queen had described Prince Philip's death as having left a huge void in her life. Our Royal Correspondent, Daniela, thank you for your time. You didn't answer the question, though, did you? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm still proud I did it, but it well was done. a bronze award. Yes, congratulations. <laughs> did you do it? Uh, no. <laughs> I, I hadn't... Well, I'll, 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 tell, I'll tell you later on as to why. But um, the Duke of Edinburgh has been synonymous uh, with the British crown for nearly 80 years, but he was originally a Greek prince who was born on the island of Corfu. Yep, yeah, he lived there for just 18 months before his family was forced into exile. Our correspondent, Jeff, live in Corfu for us this morning, which was the birthplace of the Duke of Edinburgh. Um, should we talk about something that's happening today? Um, 7.22. Lots of people, um, I think, are very particularly excited about this event today. Hairdressers in England can reopen and they are going to be busy. Are you, are you in? I'm going. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> as soon as we finish, I'm off. I'll have to wait till Wednesday this week. Uh, very busy, our hairdressers. Well, oh, Dan Johnson is in the salon. If you haven't seen him on the roller coaster, that is on our social media. It's worth a look. Uh, right now, good. let's get the news, the travel, and the weather wherever you are this morning. Um, I don't know if you were enjoying watching the Masters over the weekend. Louise watched hours and hours of it, didn't you? The, the golf from Augusta? No. Not, did you watch any of it? <laughs> OK. <laughs> I don't need to because I get the full yeah, I know. I, I come in and bore you every morning about you. it. Well, it was quite a significant winner. Hideki I know Matsuyama. it was historic. Yeah, it was because a first uh, male golfer ever from Japan to win a major. And uh, Jane is here this morning and it... it <laughs> Uh, 7.40, watching Breakfast Morning 2. Um, Nikki Graham was one of the most memorable contestants to take part in the TV show Big Brother, fondly remembered by fans for her diary room outbursts and her fantastic sense of fun. Sadly, she also struggled with an eating disorder and on Friday, Nikki died at the age of just 38. We're joined now by former Emma...
parts of the country. Good morning, Carol. Good morning. Um, looking back to my bronze award, and it was only the bronze, but it left me with a real sense of adventure, which I still have. And I don't think yeah. I would jump off the back of ferries and do <laughs> Patagon Man. So that's North why you Man. do all that, is it? Yeah. That's where it, direct link yeah. to where it comes from. Oh, there you go. It's, it's in, as you saw from what Ruth was saying there, and the people we heard from before that, it yeah. really has inspired so many people it's to go out there and do different things. Absolutely. Um, stay with us. We've got the headlines coming up. Let's bring you up to date with the BAFTAs because Nomadland was the big winner at the awards last night, scooping the gong for Best Director and Best... <laughs> there you go. And Colin Patterson, our entertainment correspondent, is going to be here in the studio a bit later to talk through some of that and the other highlights from the BAFTAs. He'll be here about 8.40 this if morning. If I ever miss a meeting again, I go, sorry, paint, I was painting. <laughs> yeah, it's a good excuse, isn't it? <laughs> makes, you, makes you sound very prim and proper. Uh, 11 minutes past 8. Carol's looking at this morning's weather and, gosh, there's snow about, isn't there? That's right, Lou. Good. Thank you very much for that, Carol. Uh, Carol's. And we're both one of the many thousands mm. of people um, who met him as well. And yeah. you remember the when you met him, what he said to you? Yeah, I was at a, a Duke of Edinburgh award ceremony. I was giving a, a speech, and he came into the room, <laughs> and it's well, you know, there's so much protocol on these occasions, and I was very a, much so, I Dan. Was, uh, yes, and I, <laughs> so the the first issue was that I was told that I could, I was I had to speak for half an hour, and he'd come in at some point and I'd only be going 30 seconds and I was told by his aide that he was coming into the room so I made a joke about the fact that can he hold on a minute I've only just not. started as a joke <laughs> didn't go down well um, but then uh, Prince Philip came in and we were in the the line up and you told you you know don't start a conversation but there was so much quiet in a room with so many people in I, I just had to speak so I asked him if typical okay. broadcast you got to fill the know, silence it was too painful the, the <laughs> silence so I asked him if he was okay he asked me what I did I said I presented a program called Football Focus and Steve Bruce who's now the Newcastle manager had just pulled out of the program that weekend so I said we've just had a pull out Steve Bruce isn't available so if you fancy it there's a spot on the sofa for you this Saturday he laughed it off with a big smile his aide wasn't best pleased. <laughs> I got in a spot of bother for that. All right, yours. Uh, so I was also giving out uh, uh, the Duke of Edinburgh Awards on, on his behalf, because yeah. that's what you do, isn't it? And uh, he came up to me and said, what do you do? And I said, oh, I read the news for the BBC News Channel at the time. And he said, don't you get fed up with saying the same thing over and over again? <laughs> <laughs> to which I, I just laughed. Yes, you just... <laughs> But anyway, yeah, you, you know, he always had something to say to every person he met, didn't he? Yeah, he did. And um, there was a nice smile on his face on most of those occasions as well. Yeah. Well, uh, Prince Philip first met his future wife, of course, the Queen, uh, who was then called Princess Elizabeth in Dartmouth. And that's where John Maguire is. You now, all those shops. I know, I know, Matthew, <laughs> I, know, I know them all well. Uh, sorry about the slight breakup we had with Nina there, but hopefully that gives you a really clear picture of what it's like in Chester yeah. and many other town centres are getting ready to open those doors for the first time in an awful Why don't you send time. us a message and tell us what you're most looking forward to doing today that you've not been allowed to do? Someone's think... having a haircut, <laughs> aren't they? <laughs> All right, now, let's get the news, <laughs> the travel and the weather wherever you are. Breakfast with Dan and Louise. Uh, we're here until 9.15 and as you well know if you watch this programme, Morning Live uh, follows us on BBC One and we can find out... Able to do things. Uh, measure of relief there. I don't think every pub will have a master of I'm hoping when it gets the hairdresser there's going to be a big gong. I can announce this hairdresser's <laughs> hairdressers for you, Louise Minchin, is open. Fingers crossed. All right, there's history being made at the Master. A very busy weekend, wasn't it? Uh, let's find out what's happening with the weather um, because Jane's talking about golf and for, for some... Carol, a few golf courses closed under snow this morning. Oh, Lovely Monday. See you later on. Yeah, thank you, you Carol. Thank you. And we're going to talk about the BAFTAs right now. And Nomadland was the big winner at last night's BAFTAs, uh, picking up four awards, including the big one, Best Film. No audience, though. We're used to that now, aren't we? And all the nominees were on Zoom, although Sir Anthony Hopkins missed uh, the moment he won Best Actor because he was apparently busy painting. And uh, we promised you uh, that Colin Patterson would be here, and he is in the studio. Colin, it... what happened last night? So it was pre-Line of Duty on telly last <laughs> night. Um, and Colin, you... Yeah. yeah. It was brilliant, yeah. Um, so, we 8.52. We've spent the last year focusing attention on coronavirus, but sadly, other diseases have, of course, not gone away. Yeah, Anne and Linda Nolan of Nolan Sisters fame uh, know that only too well. They were both diagnosed with cancer last year and they've both been supporting each other during their treatment. 
Um, I've just caught a glimpse of them. It's lovely to see them this morning. They've written a book about that journey. Anne and Linda join us from Blackpool, Singden. Are you are you televising your haircut? I later? will not be televising <laughs> my haircut today. I'm hoping. I, I, I haven't had a text message from them this morning, so I'm hoping they've still remembered. It'd be nice to see a fresh bar <laughs> Thanks. on the program. I look forward to that. <laughs> uh, we'll be speaking to a pair of... Not, not they look... Oh, Dear me, I Sometimes tie myself up in knots. You should just quit. Why don't you do this? Because I'm just, I'm just, I'm just making mistakes this morning. <laughs> They're funny, though. <laughs> Sometimes. Anyway, we'll be speaking to a pair of married comedians in a moment, John Richardson and Lucy Beaumont, who's, who've got a new series of the show based on their own home life. Yes, we'll see you in a moment. <laughs> Welcome back, everyone. Uh, the various lockdowns of the last year have been a bit of challenge for many couples. Uh, but the minor irritations of being cooped up together are probably good news if you happen to be a pair of married comedians writing a mockumentary about life at home. Yeah, lots of material. That's what John Richardson and Lucy Beaumont have been doing. They're back with a new series of Meet the Richardsons. Let's have a look. <laughs> Uh, we can meet the Richardson Nets today. It must be annoying when, you, when people don't get the catchphrase right, John. I, I understand that entirely. <laughs> it must be confusing for people, um, you know, I mean, because as you say, it's a mockumentary. You know, what, other people watching it going, what's real, what's not real? Much of it, Lucy, has been in, inspired by stuff that's actually happened during lockdown. Well, uh, sorry. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> Um, we've got as well, uh, there's, a, there's a lot of, um, we've spent quite a bit of time this morning on breakfast at a pub that's just reopening today. Uh, Lucy, how would you describe John's relationship with the pub? Because um, there's quite a bit of time spent, shall we say that? Let's have a quick look at another clip uh, from, from this week's episode. We'll come back to you in a second. Here it is. The idea of here's the deal. I think it's really yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And what it's worse it's as well, because you know she's picked that up off you, so you hear... <laughs> and uh, the latest episode of Meet the Richardsons on uh, Thursday, 10 o'clock, on Dave. Here's the deal. That's all from breakfast for <laughs> today. We'll be back tomorrow from 6. I accept the deal. Uh, morning Live now with Kim and Gethin. <laughs>